Oh, I left it out. It was so yeah. funny when you when you yeah. did a mockery of me. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, <laughs> and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. If you watch my show regularly, you know that yesterday we had an extended episode that I called Small Business Sunday so that all the generous small businesses that donated to my 200th episode of Weight Loss Wednesday prizes worth close to $2,000 had a chance to come on and sh show what their products were and what their specials were for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, things like that. Well, today's guest was not available, so he has his whole hour now to show all of his amazing products. He is the sauce boss, or a master saucier, as I like to call him, and his products are delicious. You know, yesterday I showed my, my one or two favorite products of all the different businesses, so I, I couldn't bring them all into this room, so I'm going to show you my two favorites. One of it one of his is the sriracha sauce. I love it because it squeezes just a little bit or a lot. And one is a newer product. I love the packaging. It's the banana pancake mix, but I don't like pancakes. So I use it to make waffles. I even have a video on this channel where I show you, you can use this to make waffles. It is a lot of new products. And yes, they're SOS free without sugar, oil, salt, but it doesn't matter. Even if you eat SOS, they're delicious and they're healthy. Please welcome Dylan Holmes from Well Your World. You had like this meteoric rise, like no, one day, Nobody knew you, and now everybody really? knows you. Well, I like to think everybody's always known me, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you till I knew you. But anyway, congratulations on all these wonderful. I mean, how the heck did you become an entrepreneur so fast and create such delicious, useful products that will cause us to have <laughs> more time because we don't have to sit there making our own mushroom gravy? Well, that's how it happened. I was. I mean, I guess I've always been entrepreneurial. I did was in the solar business for 10 years, but I was getting sick of that. I was getting healthy. And so then I started making things that saved me time, which was the, originally my cheese sauce and mushroom gravy mixes were the things that saved me time, uh, sauces that I always liked eating. And those were the first two products. And they are still the most popular two products that I sell. I cannot believe how fast these things sell. Even the cheese sauce, I'm worried that I'm gonna sell out here in the next day. Uh, but we'll have more coming as fast as possible. But anyway, I can show you how to, whatever anybody wants to see, just hit us up in the comments and we can prepare any and all of the products uh, today. We're set up for it. I've even got the griddle out. Since you didn't make, make them as pancakes, I could show you how I make them as pancakes on the electric griddle. This thing is a dream. Really, uh, the main reason I didn't, Dylan, is I don't have a griddle. But, you know, before you make anything, maybe you could just one by one show all the products that you have. I'd love to. Well, we have our, our original bottled sauces, which are back over here. Our, we had our original ketchup and barbecue sauce. I could grab some of these and show you. Um, they've all been here, like our most popular ones. But they come just like you would expect any bottled sauce that you've bought in the store. There's the ketchup. We have an Indian sauce. This is just like a simmer sauce that you can throw on your steamed veggies or your prepped starches or whatever. That's how I uh, started using it. Uh, and it. And it just came from me. I even have a, a recipe similar to this on my YouTube channel, Curry in a Hurry, where, which is how I came to make this particular sauce. And that's just because I like to make things really fast. And then we bottled it up and it works. So the sweet mustard and the sweet heat, same idea. Those are uh, two really popular salad dressings. So we have five regular sauces, five salad dressings, which can be used as, you know, sauces too. And uh, those were the original 10 products. I think last time I was, I think AJ was at the beginning of this year in March when we launched the five salad dressings right what two days before pandemic i know we were so lucky we got to see each other i know that was like perfect timing yeah i so, think you know they make great stocking stuffers there you go they're for sale now and uh, we've got new packaging that's going out i think we've transitioned entirely to it where instead of all that bubble wrap if you've gotten the bubble wrap and complained about it before heard we now have these handy boxes such as for our marinara these boxes now will take the place of what was a whole bunch of bubble wrap. So those are now shipping, all totally recyclable. So that is very exciting. We spent a long time working on these new boxes and there's a version for the salad dressings as well. So that's cool. We just started sending those out in the last week. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And uh, So do you ship to Canada? Because Dina says, please ask Dylan to call FedEx. He can use ground to get the cost really low. I've worked with them for 34 years. Yes, I use FedEx. Um, 
I don't know about really low, but we have been working on it. The issues that I was running into with Canada, we were shipping to Canada, then we stopped because I started getting during pandemic, a bunch of these random duties and customs fees. So I'd send out a $50 order and then they'd wanna charge another $50 just in customs. And I can't just hit surprise a customer with an extra 50 bucks. So I had to put that on pause and I just, we gotta revisit it. Um, we'll be doing some of our order fulfillment in house again. So I'll have a lot more control over how things go out for international. So stay tuned for that. In the next few months, I should be able to, to do that. So I apologize for the delay. So those are the bottled sauces. Those have been around for uh, since last year and this year for the salad dressings. We also have an Italian and a balsamic vinaigrette. These are two of my favorites. Uh, uh, this is a really nice Italian. Of course, you, balsamic vinaigrette and Italian are usually like half oil. So making these taste really good without oil was the trick. And I think we did it. So, yeah, no, I, I love the Italian actually. And I'm not even really that big of a fan on the Italian. So Diane says you might have two new children that you might want to introduce children. us to. These two here, these are just released them last week on Black Friday. And here they are, the mushroom basil pasta sauce and the marinara magnifica. So we'll, we'll throw one or both of those together and I'll show you how I like to use them. Um, but I mean, they're exactly what you would expect from a bottled pasta sauce. I but, cannot uh, wait. There is no bottled pasta sauce that, that, that is compliant. That's, I mean, there, there's one that has salt and there's one that has sugar, but I've never seen an SOS free bottle sauce. So I'm really excited because that'll be great. Just I just bought some right. Trader Joe's now sells hearts of palm uh, pasta with nothing in it, but hearts of palm. I have, we, I've seen that as well. We were going to play, I was going to make you some uh, faux mozzarella sticks using the chunky hearts of palm, which we should throw together here. Cause those are really fun to dip. Reeves loves dipping those in marinara. Reeves is here too, by the way. Hi. Hey everybody. Hi, Hi Reeves. Dina says the sriracha sauce is the best I ever tasted. I think so too, because it's hot, but it's it's not so it's hot, but it's not like it's perfect actually. It's great on Brussels sprouts. The sriracha, some, it, some people are afraid of it because it is a hot sauce, but we love it. I mean, it's it's awesome. So that is available right now as well. Uh, so yeah, let's let's start. Let's throw some stuff together. And again, whatever you want to see, I, I mean, I'm set up to show you whatever of it, these new products. Oh, I should give you a little rundown. So these are the two brand new ones that are for sale right now uh, and they're just released. So the first shipment of these marinaires are going out and I've already produced a whole other batch of like 1300 bottles each. So as soon as those sell out, we should have more in stock. It, it'll it'll keep, keep the flow going. Day powder has been really popular. This is a really exciting one. Um, every Anytime that, because we wanna do things without the added sugar, uh, we're often taking whole dates and we're blending them with a little water to make like a date paste or a date syrup or something like that. Um, but it does take an extra step. And so for some, some things, just having a dry powdered date is really handy. So like for adding it to oatmeal, you don't want to have to pull out your blender and blend and, and all this. And for various baking, you can swap this out for sugar in a recipe. Um, it's really, really good. This is not like the date sugar you might find at the store. This, once you taste it, you'll know what I'm saying. The texture, it's like really decadent and different. It's not that, it's not so gritty and like burnt tasting. This is really light and fluffy. It's a really light color compared to the other ones. It's almost like a tan color, which is really nice. So it, it's just got this gorgeous flavor and it, and it doesn't clump so badly. I mean, all, all date powders are gonna clump a little, which is why I like this container because you can give it a little shake and then put a little bit on your oatmeal or whatever. Um, so this has really been nice. And there's a little bit of it in the banana pancake mix to give it its sweetness, uh, along with some dried banana, obviously, uh, vanilla bean. AJ, when I was there and you made me that date shake, is when you put the idea in my head, I didn't even know there was such thing as this ground vanilla bean thing. And you made us that date shake where we were sitting at your counter. And I'm like, damn, I gotta look into that. And so we use a little bit of the dried ground vanilla bean in the banana pancake mix that I think we've gotten a lot of compliments on this one, so. Well, I'm glad I was your date muse. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie says, I just played in, placed an order. Thank you for the video. And that is, uh, Diane just ordered the marinara sauce. Awesome. And okay. uh, uh, Inaden said, I tasted the 
it, the, your nutritional yeast against another brand. Yours is way better. It's said, really next. good. This is this is the new tray here. I was going to tell you about next. Is I've obviously, like I said, I've been selling the cheese sauce and the mushroom gravy, which both have some nutritional yeast. Obviously, the cheese sauce has more nutritional yeast. But uh, a lot, of, I've got a lot of requests since you know. I think I first launched this in late 2018, so it's been like two years. Wow, time flies. And people wanted the non-fortified nutritional yeast. And I said, I haven't found a good one yet. I am still working on it. And finally, I went straight to the lab and, and found a really good one. This is a non-fortified nutritional yeast. And that is what is now in the cheese sauce and the mushroom gravy going forward. So, uh, yeah, people That's have been really- That's great. Tiffany wants That's to know, is your plastic packaging over. BPA free? This is the HDPE- so I think HDPE is BPA free, right? I, I forget, but there was a t I was looking into that back at the beginning, but I don't think there's any kind of BPA liners or anything in this stuff. Uh, so well, the thing is, is you use it so fast, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> and that's why people are saying, can you sell it in bulk, your banana pancake mix in your, in your nutritional yeast in bulk? I can. Uh, I used to do the cheese sauce and the gravy in big bags, and I decided to, to make it a little bit smaller because I wanted it to be sort of more in line with the size and, and serving amounts that you'd get in something like these. So I can do sort of like a bulk bag or something like that in the future. Uh, it'll take me some time. Just keeping these suckers in stock is the challenge right now. So once I get all that, all those little kinks worked out, we'll be able to uh, broaden the way our packaging works for the various items. Also, we've got a lot of requests for like sample size, salad dressings and sriracha packets and stuff like that. And now I've got a way to do that except I have to order like 14,000 packets of each flavor, which is pricey. But uh, we are able to do them now and there's enough demand that I can, I can swallow that uh, cost. <laughs> and start doing little samples that which would be really cool for promotional stuff and also if someone orders the bottled dressings of one but they haven't ordered another i could throw in a sample and be like hey try this one maybe you'll like it for next time and so i think that would be really cool plus that'd be great for travel of course and right well jody says she loves your product there's a question about whether they're organic these are not organic yet well some items are like for example the date powder does happen to be organic uh, but the other stuff is not organic yet. That'll be something we'll, we'll continue to work on. Now that I can see there's high demand for them, I'll, cause obviously things just get more expensive when you go organic. And I think some of the items, it doesn't really matter whether it's organic. Some others would be more important. So like, would I go fully organic necessarily? I don't know if there's enough motivation to do it hundred percent. But if that's what people keep demanding, I'm going to give people what they want. That's kind of the whole point. So uh, we'll keep working on that for sure. Right. Heather uh, says, why don't you go on Shark Tank? I actually emailed you the information to get on. I know. Everybody wants me to go on Shark Tank. I don't need them. I am a shark. How about that for an answer? Okay. No, I, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I have a lot I'm working on that I want to get sort of set up before I would ever get to the point where we'd want to bring in big money people. Um, I've got a lot more product ideas I'd like to turn out. I want to get into uh, making some really simple soup mixes with like dehydrated veggies and stuff where I just throw them into the uh, instant pot or on the stove with some water and boom, you've got ready soups in minutes. Um, I think those kinds of things would be really cool. I mean, there's a a million products right. that we could do. Well, Bonnie outside. says she would love sample sizes of the dressing to sneak into restaurants. And mm -hmm. Renee says, I have several of the sauces and they are delicious. How long are they good in the refrigerator after opening? They'll last like any uh, sauce that you might be used to, uh, any condiment. So what, with, before they're open, I think there's like a two year shelf life stamped on the, the box. I'm gonna start some pasta going so we're not just talking the whole time. And sure thing. Cheryl done. says, Dylan is killing. I like that. Uh, well, thanks. Right so yeah, they're, they're very shelf stable. That's the only way you can bottle these up and sell them. So once they're open in the fridge, they'll last like anything you're used to. And this is actually a lentil pasta. Reeves has been taking a little break off of um, gluten and oats. So we've been trying out some of these other items. This is a pretty tasty pasta and it's pretty cheap too. So that's been fun. On that note, 
this, the banana pancake mix, and we'll make some pancakes here in a bit, but it is not gluten-free. The label that I printed when I made this was kind of before I understood the whole thing with oats being contaminated with gluten sometimes because of whether it's the tractor or the facility or whatever. So I had a sticker made that it should be on every lid that says this is not a gluten-free product necessarily. Um, so anybody with uh, gluten issues would still want to, I don't have the certified, certified gluten-free oat flour in this yet. Uh, we can work on that for the future, but it isn't yet. Um, so that's just one tidbit to keep in mind. So we are making a little pasta. We'll do some pasta sauce. While the pasta's cooking, I'll show you this hearts of palm thing that Reeves has been doing. Uh, tell me about this, Reeves. You like it. And uh, it sort of takes like a little mozzarella stick trick. It does, because when you put it in the air fryer, it, it kind of makes the inside soft, but the outside's still crunchy. How is that even possible? Yeah. It seems like it would be the opposite way around. Remind me what we're using here. So I did some quinoa flakes. Mm -hmm. some of your nooch, a little onion powder, and some garlic powder. Okay, cool. Did you grind up the quinoa flakes even more? I did, just a little bit in the so magic bullet. So this, you can also do this with oat flour or any kind of flour, um, but we've been using, like I said, we've been playing with non-gluten non and non-oat stuff, so the quinoa flakes have been really good. We just made this recipe, these jingle balls everybody's been asking for, which is our, <laughs> our meatloaf ball and uh i guess that's what we're calling like a lentil loaf sort of thing and uh so that we did with the quinoa flakes too and it was really good so i'm just mixing up this mix that you saw me throw in this bowl and then here are our hearts of palm you can get these in a jar which looks like this at they sell them at costco whoops they sell them at costco and probably lots of places and is there anything added? There is salt added to these, unfortunately. So you'd want to rinse them out pretty good, but you're still not going to be able to get rid of all of the salt. And then uh, you really just give them a spin in here and coat them. And then we throw them on the air fryer, the air fryer basket here like that. These could use a little splash so that they stick even more. Let me give them a little bit of a spritz. And then spin them in the in the dust. There we go. There we go. Now it's coating a little bit better. And then how long does this take in the air fryer? Mm, 10 to 15 minutes. All right, cool. So yeah, these are a fun little snack. And we, we've been liking them with the marinaras, um, dipping them in the marinaras, but also really good dipping using the uh, Indian or the Asian sauce for dipping or the ketchup or the barbecue or the sweet heat or the uh, sweet mustard is our most popular uh, bottled sauce. And so those are really nice for dipping all of this. I'm just going to throw these in. You know what I've been doing lately? Which is a little bit of the ketchup mm -hmm. with a couple drops of sriracha in it to make like a spicy ketchup. Oh, a sriracha ketchup? Yeah. Okay, I'm going the fast way now. I don't need to, to uh, spin these one at a time. So here we go. Let's get these in there in the air fryer and get on to the pasta. All right. There we go. So I got the Breville back here. And we'll MB says, I see a salt free substitute. Is that new? Yes, I'll tell you about that too. I, I forgot the three uh, spice mixes. Okay, so those are in there for what time, Ribs? Uh, 15, try, 12? Yeah. Let's just start. Okay. So yeah, let me show you those. The, these are really nice. This was, I spent some time getting this Fiesta Fire Blend. Um, instead of just coming out with a whole pile of different spice blends, I, uh, let's clean this off. I was working really hard just to get my favorite one, which is a Mexican. All the Mexican spice blends that I've ever found are crummy. I mean, they're just like paprika and chili powder, and it's just this red mix. Well, this one is a lot different. This is the Fiesta Fire Blend that we've come out. This is my first like legit spice blend, and it's got lots of green in there too. And that is marjoram and oregano, 
And then there's some chili powder, of course. There's a little lemon and garlic and onion in there. So this is really good. It is not too hot. Yes, I know I call it a fire blend, but it is not too hot. It does have a little kick, but I love to use this with my favorite vegan meal is like dicing up potatoes and uh, boiling them and then sauteing, you know, all the whatever veggies you have in the fridge and then seasoning it with this is the plainest, simplest meal ever. And so that's why I came up with this one first. Again, I make a lot of these products for me first. And then <laughs> I just figure if I like them, then maybe you will too. And it's turned out to be the case. Here is the salt substitute. Stardust, we call it. Uh, give this a shot. This is great for whatever you would, I mean, anybody who's trying to avoid uh, salt in the diet, that you can either cook with this or you can sprinkle it on the table, uh, on your food on the table. Really, really good. Uh, what else can I tell you? It's got a little bit of nutritional yeast, a little bit of the celery seed to give it that kind of faux saltiness, a little citric acid, but it doesn't have any like potassium chloride or any of those like salt replacement things do that you see on the internet. Um, so there's that. Here's my everything bagel seasoning. Again, most everything bagel seasonings are full of salt, tons of salt. So we've made one without that. And this has really tasty uh, garlic, onion, red bell pepper. And I even threw in some sunflower seeds along with the poppy seeds and the white and black sesame seeds. So this is a really fun mix. I love putting this on like uh, avocado toast or I'll sprinkle this on top of if we make homemade pizzas and stuff like that. It just gives a little bit of an oomph to things because obviously it's a little more calorie dense seeds, you know, a little richer. So those are the three of those. So anyway, let's check this pasta. And I also want to tell you about our cooking show because uh, for, well, for Chef AJ followers, we have a link there. I think maybe you have it in the description of your video here, but it's wellyourworld.com slash chef AJ. If you go to that link, then you can see a few options will pop up. You'll see a, a mug shot of each of us at the top. And then down below, you'll see a link for to buy the sauces. You'll see a link to get a free one month of our cooking show. We do the, we call it Well Your Weekend. And we do a live cooking show twice a month on Saturdays. And that is where we'll spend an hour, an hour and a half making a few different recipes and uh, this weekend's is our Hanukkah episode. So what are we making, Reebs? Do you remember? We were going to do an uh, interesting twist on latkes. I think we we're going to do a spinach artichoke version. Oh, that sounds good. And then Chef AJ, you'll have to tell me if I'm saying this word right, but Dylan wanted to try to make a kugel. Kugel, oh, yeah, K-U-G-E-L. That sounds delicious. Can you make sufganiyot? That's what we eat. It's, a, it's like a jelly donut. It's called sufganiyot. Jelly donut. Well, that sounds a little more challenging, yeah. but I'm sure. Yeah, that's one of the things we're supposed to eat. It, it, well, in Hebrew, it's sufganiyot, but they're really like a jelly donut. That's one huh. of the traditional things. We'll have to look that up. I also saw your, uh, in the unprocessed book, you have that faux uh, ch uh, chicken liver thing. What's right, chopped Power? liver. Absolutely. Power pate or something like that. Yeah, my friend Michelle put that in. Yeah, it's, it's very good. It tastes just like chopped liver. The secret is, you know, caramelizing the onion. That's what that does it. Hey, here's a fun question for you from, uh, from produce, not pills. Does Dylan like dill? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> dill always reminds me of my grandmother because she grew it in her garden when I was little up in, in Saskatchewan. And, uh, but yes, of course I love dill. But before we go away from the cooking show, anybody who signs up, you get that free month. And then as soon as you're a member, even if you're in your free trial, you get 10% off of your orders at, uh, of anything in the Well Your World store. So join us. You get, this is what, our 59th? There's almost 60 past episodes. And once you're able to log on to the website, you get all of the past replays and PDFs. Of all We've the made all of our rest. When I first started doing this, I was kind of just winging it. <laughs> which is still what I do. But now that I have Rebecca, things are more legit. And she's made all of my old recipes into PDFs. So every episode, you go to the replay page, you got the video there, you, off to the side, it lists the recipes and has a link where you can just click and download the PDF. And you can just go back and download every single one. I don't care. And uh, so join us this weekend. We've got the Hanukkah one. And mm -hmm. then uh, two weeks from that, we've got the Christmas one. And then... Uh, to a month going forward. We have 
pretty fun plans. So yeah, the shows are great. You guys should check it out. The shows are wonderful. They're they're live. You can ask questions, and it's really it's 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 really fun. We have all these these different camera angles. I've got the four camera angles. Are you know that it sounds good. It looks good. There's this angle. There's the cutting board here. Oh, I'm chopping. Oh yeah. And then there's a stove I just showed you, and then of course the Reeves cam, which is <laughs> has a fireplace in the background too. How festive the, is that? I stole the Breville camera. Yeah, we had a. It was a Breville cam for like a week, and then Reeves is like, enough of that. But you know, during the show, um, just like Chef AJ's doing here, I'm the one that will read the questions out loud in the chat. So it's yeah. very, very interactive. It's it's kind of like a create your own adventure cooking show. We have a rough idea of what we're gonna do, but we kind of just take it wherever people want it to go. So I am throwing in, yeah, that's totally right. I mean, we take tons of recommendations and re requests, I guess I should say, uh, for the various themes and different recipes. And so, yeah. So I just dumped the bottle of the sauce. In. It's a pretty nice thick sauce. If you like yours more watery, just pour in a little bit of water if you want. It'll open up a bit once it heats up too, of course, it'll become a little more liquidy. But this is the mushroom basil, which you can see has these big, beautiful chunks of mushroom mm -mm -mm. and a little bit of fresh basil as well as the oregano. And so this is a really nice sauce. And all I do is heat it up and put it on some pasta, meal complete. And I just posted a video on our channel from um, on Friday, we posted it showing a few other ways. I'll show you uh, a couple of those ways I like to use marinara too. Not just pasta, because I know a lot of Chef AJ followers are not pasta people, and that's cool. Yeah, just we're not flour type people. Hey, Dylan, right. people are asking, could you make an SOS free sauerkraut? Because, you know, sauerkraut and all the kimchi, they always have a lot of salt. I actually have done that. Um, I made a sauerkraut and a kimchi and along with a yogurt. So one of our live cooking show episodes was making a homemade fermented yogurt from with just soybeans and water. No, uh, none of all that sweetener junk like you will find if you buy any kind of store-bought uh, vegan yogurt usually. And so I made that and at the same time I played around with making fermented veggies, uh, kimchi and a sauerkraut without salt. So I'm going, I wanna make a little guidebook or a little rest or a little video series because it's a little it's not that complicated but it's worth some attention uh, because it is a little bit trickier when you don't have the salt to stabilize everything so um i can i i would love to do that we should do that in a live show episode so i'm thinking that we'll do that in the first couple of months of the year we'll do a live show episode and then after a while i'll eventually make it for free on youtube but i always give the the paid live show members first dibs on all my good ideas. <laughs> okay, let's give this another stir. But it's definitely possible to do. I even took an, I, a little beverage refrigerator and I created a little uh, incubator that I could hold the temp really consistently to test out how everything works with no salt. I, I think it was overkill and I didn't really need it, but it was a really good step with experimenting how to get it just right. Oh, this smells so good. This pasta sauce, I think you're really gonna love it. I think it's gonna be my most popular product. It's just, I didn't know I could get a pasta sauce to taste that good without the added salt. And most pasta sauces have, like the one I was looking at from Sprouts uh, to compare was like 90 calories in a half cup. This is 45 because most of them have a lot of added oils. And so this is way less calorie dense and way less fat because I'm obviously not using any oil in this. Um, I can't wait then, to try it and I'll make some recipes with it once I do try it. And you do need a little sweetness in, in a tomato sauce, I think, to break, to, to kind of keep the acidity from the tomatoes at bay. So what we did, instead of obviously adding processed uh, garbage sugar, we used whole dates in the Magnifica and whole figs in the mushroom basil blended up. So it's just got a hint of sweetness, but nothing too strong. I think that the store-bought ones with their sweetness, they just like do way too much for our kind of eating, our kind of palate, because we're used to things being a lot less sweet and uh, they're, they're super tasty. So I think you're going to be really pleased with that. And there we go. This is done and heated up. And uh, let's see how this pasta is doing. Give it a little sneak peek. Okay, that's good. That's ready to go too. So let's, uh, I'll show you a little pasta and I'll show you this other thing I like to do with lentils. 
All right. So let me grab a bowl. I'll do a half and half. Want to hear a nice testimonial? I'd love to. Adina says, Dylan is a whiz in the kitchen, getting the balance just right without the salt and sugar. You don't even know these ingredients are not in this product. And I agree. And that's why even if you're not following SOS free, they're still delicious. You know, you can always add the SOS. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, it's very easy to add salt to things. For example, I, my own palate is not 100% salt free. I don't usually add have any need for sugar. And if I did, this solves 100% of that. But salt, sometimes I like to either sprinkle a little salt or I'll do some miso paste or some soy sauce. For example, when I make my cheese sauce, which we can do if you want, uh, I'll add a little bit of uh, miso paste to this. What's it called? Uh, am I using the right word? What do we usually call it? It is, I guess, it's just red, the red or the yellow miso paste. Yeah. Um, I think I'm thinking of when we, with the gravy, we'll do either soy sauce or the tamari lately or the coconut aminos or the liquid aminos. I mix all that stuff up because it, to me, it just tastes the same. <laughs> but uh, so you can always very easily add a little bit of salt if you're a salt person. The nice thing is for me, especially, is to have it be totally oil free and sugar free. So salt can always be added this is our uh i just put prepared a bowl of the pasta and i half and half it with some lentils and then i just dump on some of this sauce all over that mm -mm -mm. and then i like to do this with add a little bit of sprinkle on some nooch put a little bit of the non-fortified nutritional yeast on top give it a little zing and boom that is my pasta and I love it with lentils. I've, I love pasta, any pasta sauce with lentils, even just in the sauce itself. So I love to uh, put it over a bed of lentils. I forget sometimes how delicious plain old lentils are. Mm. So I think you're really going to love this sauce. It is so tasty. Mm -mm. So that's the sauce. Let me know if you have any questions on that. Mm, that's good. See. Oh, even put a little bit of the everything bagel on top. Mm. Maybe mm. could you talk about what the differences are in both? If somebody didn't want to order both, how would they decide which one to order? The two sauces? Mm -hmm. The Magnifica? I have another jar of both here. So the mushroom basil and the Magnifica are the two. The Mag Marinara Magnifica was named by our Well Your World group on our Thursday live show. We were like, hey, we got to come up with a name. Uh, it was the group that named what some of the sauces the desert cattle, a lot of the <laughs> bottled sauces we came up with together in the thursday live so this is sort of our og marinara and it doesn't have any they they both they all have obviously onions a little bit of red bell pepper not spicy just mild regular red bell pepper uh it's quite sweet in fact um so the garlic the onion the bell pepper and then it's got like some you know oregano parsley basil stuff like italian uh seasoning and then of course the tomatoes. And that's pretty much it for this one. I didn't put any black pepper or crushed red pepper. It's not a spicy sauce. So for anybody who's extra wimpy, this is the one you wanna get. <laughs> or in the case of Chef AJ, where you actually have an allergy to black pepper, I made this for you, AJ. Oh, I, and I, it. I cannot wait to try it. Your shipment will be in the mail today, uh, heading to you. And then this other one is all, it's similar Oh, and by the way, this one is sweetened with the dates. So whole dates are in here ground up to give it a little bit of a hint of sweetness. This one is the figs. And so figs and dates taste a little bit different, not a lot. But uh, so it does have a little bit of a different pl pr flavor profile from the sweetness uh, standpoint. And then I've thrown in fresh basil. I've thrown in big chunky mushrooms like I showed you. And then I've thrown in a little bit of black pepper. Still, it is not spicy by any means. Maybe eventually I'll make a spicy one. But again, it's so easy. What I do when I'm making these, because I like things really spicy, is I'll just throw in a teaspoon of crushed red pepper. It's so, it's so easy to, to add something like that. It's not like a, you're going to have to go and you know recreate a whole recipe at home or something. You're just throwing a little hot stuff and away you go. So I don't know. I'm not that motivated to make one that where the only difference in the ingredients is that I've added crushed red pepper since it's so easy for you. To Angela do it, like, wants to know if your products are non-GMO. Yeah, I don't think anything has GMOs in it. 
uh, certainly not the new church. No, it's, it should all be non-GMO. So that one's an easy one to get because most of the places, most things aren't GMO anyway. I'm, cert- I'm not doing anything with corn or soy or anything like that. Mm. That is so good. Okay. What else do you want to see? You want to make some pancakes? Absolutely. And if you don't have the electric griddle, can you still make pancakes? Well, I have had people say, I tried it on my nonstick skillet and it was terrible. It didn't work out. I got the griddle and then it was great. And I've had other people say, I tried it on my nonstick griddle and it was great. So I don't know. Uh, I certainly wouldn't try it without oil on a stainless steel or something like that because it's just inevitably going to stick. But I don't do any kind of cooking with oil, and I don't think anybody watching probably does. Um, and so that's where this nonstick griddle is so great. This thing is like 30 bucks. We bought it about a year ago, actually, at, on Black Friday at Target. And we were, that, <laughs> on, we were at Target on Friday night again, and they had it for $20, this thing. I couldn't believe it. And uh, it is just such a good tool. And we use it for the pancakes, obviously. But also, I love making homemade tortillas from the fresh masa that is just hominy ground up with water and whatever. And those make, I have my own little tortilla press and this is just amazing for homemade tortillas because again, nothing sticks. So that is just a dream. Um, Dylan, Linda wanted to know if she can still get the 10% discount without signing up for the show. You gotta sign up, it's free to sign up for a month. You can cancel your membership anytime. Uh, if you really want a 10% off, you can email me and tell me that you need it right now. And I'll, I'm not going to tell you no, uh, but I would like you to try us for a month. Join us and uh, make sure you cancel. And if you forget to cancel and you're like, oh, I forgot to cancel, it renewed and I got charged the $15 monthly. Can you please reverse it? Of course, I'll say yes. I am not that guy. That's I'm not like Netflix.com here <laughs> where once you're on a recurring and you forget, you're screwed or something, or I'm not going to give you your money back. Uh, I'm a real person, very easygoing. Uh, so sign, sign up and join us. You'll love the cooking show. You'll get it a whole month for free. You can watch the old ones. And then uh, as soon as you're ready, to, you can cancel it the same day you sign up and you'll still get the month. So join us and try it out. I'd encourage you to. But if you absolutely refuse, you can email me and we'll, we'll work something out this one time uh, for you. Okay? That's so, very generous of you. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, let's make some pancakes. This is the easiest thing you've ever seen. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. Here's the pancake mix. I don't, I I put some directions on the back, like, oh, X amount of mix for add this much. I don't do use the recipe. And I would encourage you not to worry about a recipe either. Here's what I do. Just take it and add it. Got a, a mixing bowl and a whisk is really all you're gonna need for this. And I'll just take some of the mix Shake it up so you know everything's mixed up, but this doesn't really separate. Um, Throw that in there. There go our uh, hearts of palm. We'll check on those. And then I got, this is the cheapest soy milk ever from Trader Joe's, just soybeans and water. You can use uh, an almond milk. You can use your own, whatever milk you like and is your go-to. Uh, I would probably not use water for this like a BizQuick would be because they have a bunch of junk ingredients in there. So I would add some sort of a nut milk or other uh, plant milk. And I just add a little bit at a time, just pour in a little and then start whisking it up and you'll get to know what thickness of batter you like. Obviously this is way too thick, still needs more milk. Add a little bit more milk, no big deal. And then just keep mixing it And as it starts to come together, you'll know when you're there. You know what a pancake batter looks like more like most likely. And it's a very forgiving batter. So whether it's thick or it's thin, it's going to make really good pancakes. Obviously, if you thin it out, they're going to be a little bit thinner pancakes. The thicker the batter, the bigger and fluffier the pancakes are going to be. But, you know, you get fewer pancakes out of a box, out of a container that way. And that's it. I've just added, I've just eyeballed it. Um, you can get some frozen fruit out and you can plop it down when you hit the griddle with all this and this is it. And so let me tell you for a second, go ahead, AJ. Oh, just a couple of questions. Do you have a tortilla mix or a cornbread mix? I don't, but we can certainly work on those if there's something that you'd like. That's great. And do you have a sea vegetable seasoning? 
No, but we can also do that. I've thought about that. We also want to make some different popcorn topper type of mixes that don't have the added nuts. We're thinking of making, I've had a lot of requests, one of them from you, AJ, about making a ranch dressing bottle. And we're going to try using some hemp hearts and doing some stuff with that. So 2021, we should have another 10 or more products doing some really cool stuff. So for the banana pancake, remember it's SOS free and baking powder is a very salty. Uh, so a conventional baking powder adds a lot of milligrams of sodium to your mix and I didn't want that. So I sought out a baking powder that is totally SOS free. And sure enough, our friend at Energy, uh, you know the Energy, they make that egg replacer, but they make a totally SOS, no sodium or potassium. That was actually a baking powder that was designed for dialysis patients and people that are in rough shape and can't be having any of that extra stuff. So I used that and it really worked well for this. I was blown away when I first tried it out. And so that is what is in here is to keep it true to the SOS free uh, moniker. So let's make some pancakes. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, there's a question. Why do you say you can't use water? I haven't tried it to be honest. Uh, you could try it. I mean, the, the mix has got, like I say, oat flour, it's got the banana, it's got the uh, dates and the vanilla. It may be, you know, it's gonna have a little bit less flavor if you do it with, let's not set that so in front of everybody so it can fall off and I'll move this griddle over. So I haven't tried it. So if you wanna try it with water, uh, let me know how it works and then I'll, I'll change my, uh, the way I say that uh, in the future. So this is, this is the griddle. It is so simple. It is just, the, it's super lightweight, simple thing. Use a, uh, don't use a metal spatula on here because the, this surface, you can't really tell, but this surface has just got ridges all over it. And it just makes things slide on it like a magic carpet. It's really something. So let's get a spoon. Make some pancakes, shall we? So here we go. I think I'm hot enough. Maybe I should, how close am I to the 350? Oh yeah, I'm right on the money, okay. So I put the griddle at 350 is where I've had the best results. And boom, just drop on some batter and you'll start to watch these babies rise up just like you'd expect. I can do like seven on this. A griddle usually at a time. And this is where you can now take some of your fresh or frozen berries, even if they're still frozen, and plop down a few if you like a little bit of fruit on your pancakes. And they'll uh, thaw out on the griddle. And by the time you flip them, they'll be ready to go. I think I've taken up all the space I can. I had enough for one more. But look how beautiful they're bubbling up. Um, this baking powder is really good stuff. Wow, they look perfect. Yeah, they look great. And they only take probably maybe one to two minutes on the one side and then flip them and do like one more minute on the other side. And it's, it's that easy. And you're gonna see how easy they come up off this griddle. This thing is magic. What else do we use this griddle for, Reeves? <laughs> um, bean burgers, tortillas, like you were saying, corn fritters. Um... We do the hash browns. We just filmed a video yesterday yeah, where you take the bag of the frozen hash brown potatoes, which you could also just do in your food processor throw those down, maybe toss them first raw with some veggies, like some uh, diced bell pepper and onion. I love doing them like that. And then just spread them out on this thing and just leave them. And mm -hmm. you can eventually flip them over and they're really, I love hash browns like that. So here we go. Look at these babies. Wow. And no sticking whatsoever. Oh my God, they look like perfect pancakes, like from a restaurant. And then as soon as you flip them, they'll puff up even more because the other side uh, is now getting the heat because it's, I guess, baking powder is heat activated, right? Um, so they're really, really good. You can put on, you could sprinkle on a little bit of date powder on top, or you can blend up some fresh dates with water and make your own like date paste or date syrup. Um, you could just use maple syrup if you're doing that. That's probably the only other sugar that we'll eat is with these pancakes. We'll, we'll put a fresh banana chopped up, make them with a little bit of fruit, and then I'll either do a little bit of maple syrup or 
I'll take the same frozen berries I mentioned and just throw them in a little saucepan on the stove. Probably don't even need to add water if you're using the frozen ones and just stir them up on the heat and it'll turn into a nice chunky fruity syrup. And that is so good. Just pour it over top of these too. So we did mini versions of the pancakes for um, Thanksgiving brunch. Oh, that's right. We made a little uh, chocolate fondue mm -hmm. out of, uh, um, what's that stuff called? What did you end up using? Did you use the uh, some carob, carob powder? And some soy milk and a little bit of the date powder. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then we did, we had little silver dollar pancakes and, uh, so, and dipped them in the chocolate fondue. So there you have it. There's the other side. These are re rock and ready. So I made a little bit of a thinner batter this time, but you can see, I mean, these are legit uh, pancakes. No messing around. I need a plate for these. So I was pretty excited about this mix. I think people have really liked it. I'm also worried about selling out of it so quickly. Is this stuff, we only put this stuff on sale, what, Halloween? Mm -hmm. So we've had a month and we've just, it's been crazy, the demand. People are loving everything. So I'm really excited and it just, Gives me more motivation to work on more uh, new product ideas for next year because there are not enough simple things. I mean, we got to, we got to prep all our meals and nobody, you know, everybody else gets to go to the store and buy the bottled pasta sauce because they don't know any better. And uh, we don't have any, any simple things like that. Uh, and is, that so, a black or, is your grill called Black and Decker? Someone's asking. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was another brand that was also right in the same similar price range that was a uh, Presto or something like that, maybe. And they're, they're all going to be, if it's around a 30, 30, 35 bucks if it's not on sale. So today's Cyber Monday. Now, maybe this stuff's on sale on Amazon or something. Today's I hadn't, Cyber Monday. I hadn't looked. Do they still have, is Cyber Monday still a thing? Isn't everything online now? Yeah, I mean, there's a, like, for example, uh, the Nutra Milk is $100 off today, and Body Deli is 25% off today, and uh, the Ad Joy is, uh, has a 25% off today. So a lot of the companies that I had on yesterday are having their big sales still today. Mm hmm Oh, these are so good. I'm telling you. <laughs> Don't just... forget the hearts of palm, people are saying. Okay, we'll get to that. They want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> That's real good. I got like six more pancakes so I could eat first. All right, let's do it. You have any sausage to go with it? I don't have a vegan whole food SOS free sausage yet. Maybe this a mix. Good. God, that would, Dylan, you know what I would love is like, I, I would love a mix that I, I, there used to be a company where you just add water and then it's your burger. Really? Yeah, I, I, I wish I could remember. It was when I was in my 30s. It was completely vegan and it came in different flavors and it had everything in it. I guess it was either freeze dried or dehydrated and you basically just add water and then you had your burgers and it didn't always have beans in it either. It, it was amazing. It was these veggie burgers. I wish I could remember the company. I mean, I, I, it sounds very reasonable to put something like that together with a freeze dried bean or starch of some kind because those you take... Those are a little fin more finicky with, uh, would you mind turning that light back on? It just turned off for no reason. And um, we could work on something like that. All right, let's get these hearts of palm. Mm, and pancakes though. Okay. So these, what's, they look like they got enough time. You could, I always, it's, it's okay to go a couple more minutes. Most of this stuff's pretty forgiving. So there they are. And now let's get a little bowl and uh, do some marinara. And I'll tell you how these came out. I could just use a little more. Phil, you can mention your YouTube channel and the Facebook group too. Yes, we do have, for those of you who don't know, I started on YouTube. I mean, when I first started making videos in 2017, I was and still am an avid Chef AJ on YouTube follower. Of course, Chef AJ thinks she's not a YouTuber, but she really is. <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, that's how it all started, reading McDougal and following Chef AJ and uh, Doug Lyle and Alan Goldhammer and Michael Clapper. Those were my go-to uh, doctors, and I think they still are. Okay, here is some of the marinara. Let's throw these hearts of palm on a plate. Oh, they feel nice and soft. And these are just a little cutesy patootsy uh, mozzarella stick um, thing. 
to get to get your fix, those old memories of terrible poisonous food. <laughs> and there you have it. What do you think? Oh my god, that looks again like a restaurant. It looks incredible. So dip that in some marinara. This is a beautiful chunky marinara, by the way. I don't mess around. I'm not if I want to just tomato sauce in a can. No. Oh. This is great. Hearts of palm are really weird. I don't really understand what they actually are yet. <laughs> yeah, is it a vegetable? I, I don't know what it is, but they're good. And they're making all kinds of pastas out of them now. They're really low calorie density. It's like uh, when they replicated everything with zucchini. Pardon my mouthful. Um, so they're nice for a snack. If you're trying to kind of take the edge off, but you don't necessarily want to make a whole big meal. These are a fast, easy way to do it. So have fun with that. Um, maybe I'll have one more and then hand it over to you, Reeves, because I know you probably want one. <laughs> They're hot. Mm. I want to try the quinoa flakes. It worked out great. Quinoa flakes and oats are a good one-to-one -one if you're doing the gluten-free thing. Okay, yeah. what else do you want to see? Kim agrees that a vegan meatloaf mix would be great. Okay. But if you do one without soy that. or wheat or beans for me, that would be amazing. Oh, and, and we have a request for a salsa. I am mm -hmm. The salsa is actually one of the first things that I was hoping to work on. I've uh, been trying to prep some really nice uh, chilies, both mild and hot. I do want to have a hot salsa because that's not something where you just like add a little bit of crushed red pepper and make your salsa hot. No. It has to actually be in the peppers, you know? So I want to work on a mild and a hot or medium or whatever salsa. Those are two of the first ones I want to keep working on. I started working on them, but salsa ended up being much more challenging than the marinara's. The marinara's, I swear, I got those on like the second try. But the salsa is trickier. I also like to make a green, uh, you know, tomatillo sort of salsa, I think would be really good. I'd also like to make a hot sauce, sort of like a Mexican style, like Cholula kind of hot sauce. The sriracha, excuse me, the sriracha is still like a thick, you know, a, you know, sriracha, it's thicker. Whereas the, the shaker bottle hot sauces with the little, they're more vinegary and they're more liquidy. There's not quite so much fiber, if you will. So those are definitely be something that I want to work on, um, would be really fun. Let's have another pancake. I'm so sorry that you can't be enjoying these. Look at these perfect little pancakes. <laughs> so uh, what else can I tell you? We are, sign up for the cooking show. You get 10% off of everything. Um, all orders get, at $50, it's free shipping. So there's an $8 shipping fee under $50 and free shipping as soon as you hit 50 bucks. So spend 50 bucks, it's easy. Yeah, and somebody here probably is gonna win the $50 gift card that you donated to the 200th episode when we announced it on mm -hmm. Sunday. I, I don't know who, but I bet you it's somebody that watches us regularly. It would be the would kind of person same. that would have entered. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we're doing the uh, Hanukkah episode this weekend and I think it'll be fun. I can't um, wait. And, and, and so and I just wish it, I mean, I've, I watched the replays because I, I, I have my show at the same time. I wish your show was like an hour earlier so I could watch it every week. But I know. Well, ours is an hour. No, it's still the same. I've always done it that time since I started. I've I never know. Started. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to compete with you. It's just I was trying no. not to because Jane Velez Mitchell has a show and then this other lady has a vegan show at once. So I was just trying to pick a time that no, yeah, no. Else was. Just, and now it's the time so I guess I'm only stuck so many it. hours in the day Absolutely. but uh yeah try it out uh like I said it's free and um I'm not gonna so we have a request for a buffalo sauce and you know I, I would I love a green sauce about. Dylan like because I, I I like green like and I'm not talking about like salsa but like it usually comes in a bottle like this like a green like a, it's a Mexican kind of tomatillo sauce it's a green sauce yes. yeah because I, I, I make I, one, but it's like, it's such a pain because I have to roast the tomatillas and exactly. you know, it's just... I do it with roasted to tomatillo. In fact, the recipe is on the YouTube channel. That's what I want to recreate is my green salsa, which is the roasted tomatillos, roasted poblano peppers, lots of garlic and onion and uh, cilantro and uh, lemon or lime. And I think it would be really, really good. 
and so easy. Linda says, I'm so happy you introduced us to his products. That's me. I'm like the vegan Don King. I like to, <laughs> exactly. promote, I like to promote all wonderful vegan people with their wonderful products. And Kathy won't request an enchilada sauce. And Diane wants to know, do you sell gift cards? Yes, there's a gift card. If you go to wellyourworld.com slash store, there's a gift card uh, item in the list of items that you can buy and you can, uh, you can do that real easy. We have some really funny t-shirts too. We do, we have, <laughs> and we're making more. Reeves is working on some Christmas Here's shirts one. that we're gonna unveil on our Thursday live show. This week at 4 p.m. Pacific, we'll be on uh, just regular YouTube and uh, we'll put up some new Christmassy themed Well Your World shirts for sale. Mm -hmm. um, um, Blue Jay must have come in late, but you don't currently ship worldwide, right? No, and we're hoping to get at least get Canada in the coming couple of months and then get back to, I also was doing Australia, New Zealand, Germany, and the UK or something. And, but it's pandemic. I was getting packages that just were not arriving and then I'd reship it and then both would arrive. And it was just like a total nightmare. So as soon as things come back to normal, at least to some extent, uh, we should be able to get that. Plus, like I said, I'll be shipping orders out in house more uh, in the future and I'll have more control of the whole process. So it's going to be, we're just getting better and better building a whole warehouse. Can you believe this, this is nuts? This is crazy. Right. Sue says, I'm confused. What's the difference between Thursday show and Saturday show? Thursday is just a free Q and A hangout we do on YouTube for all the world to see. And Saturday is a private one. That's where we'll take our clothes off. You know, it, it's real, I'm kidding. We, we do remain clothed. But, uh, but that, we dress up in costumes sometimes. But we do dress up in costumes. <laughs> so that's our, our hour of making. Uh, it's a smaller audience, obviously, because it's the paid members. And we'll, you know, we'll talk more, we'll talk more smack about people in that group. Like AJ, just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, this is great. Thank you so much. And uh, Stacy's happy for more t-shirts. So guys, just check out the products. Check out the show. It's free for a month. Why wouldn't you want it? It's a lot of fun. And you can look at all the other uh, recipes that, that are the, from past episodes. So congratulations on your success and in, in creating such wonderful products that really fill a need for my audience and myself included. And I cannot wait to try that marinara. Much more to come soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having right. me on, AJ. Thanks, it's always Steve. great. Thanks, Dylan. And thanks all of you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. when I have another cooking demo with a couple called the Happy Vegan Couple that I'll be meeting for the first time, recommended by my friend, Dr. Lori Marvis. And because it's the first Tuesday of the month, at 1 p.m., we have another cooking demo with flavors of California balsamic vinegar. It's called Tuesdays with Thomas. All right, take care, Dylan and Reeves. Thanks again. Bye-bye.